What's the word, y'all? Man, I'm back on Kenny For Real. Can you see me being consistent? I am a consistent uploader on Kenny For Real channel. And because of that, we just hit 250,000 subscribers over here. So thank you for that, man. I wasn't even really grinding. And now that we grind, and imagine where we're going to go. So subscribe if you're new. Leave a like on the video. Yesterday, we talked about the Western Conference Finals, and it's been a blast. Um, now we got to talk about the East. We got to talk about the East. Game 4 literally just wrapped up a couple minutes ago, and then I hit record. So no post-game interviews or anything like that. So... Maybe something interesting happens, but I kind of want to talk about, I guess it's not really the game. I'll talk about some of the game, but more I want to talk about the Miami Heat. So let's talk about the game. Um, the Miami Heat almost blew it. If, if they would have blown this game, oh boy, it would have been crazy. Um, they were about like nine with a minute and a half to go. The only thing they had to do was, you know, hold the ball, hit a couple free throws. Jimmy Rutley had a nasty bad turnover where he tried to catch the ball and kind of took his eye off of it. Jason Tatum gets it and... Stan Van Gundy says something that's very interesting, and I, I like having Stan Van Gundy on the call, even though he does complain a decent amount, and sometimes it can get annoying. Sometimes he's complaining, and you think about him like, man, he really got a point. On that specific play, Jimmy Butler turns it over. He chases down Jason Tatum. He swipes at the ball. Boom. It goes off Jason Tatum's leg, but they call a foul. We get the, you know, every time an NBA player does anything now, it, this is the hand signal they making. Jimmy Butler does one of these. Eric Spolstra challenges it, and they win the challenge. But instead of it being Miami Heat ball because Jason Tatum pushed off and the ball went off of his leg, they couldn't change the call from one thing to another. They just had to cancel the call. And because of that, they had to jump the ball. And then Boston just got it back. It was like nothing even happened. And Stan Van, Gun Stan Van Gunny went on a little rant like, yo, that's terrible. It should be Miami Heat ball. And I agree, NBA. Fix that. Fix that. But ultimately, the Miami Heat closed out this game. I am... Kind of afraid of what's going to come out about Bam Adebayo's hand, arm, shoulder, whatever it was. He was he really hurt it, it looked like, because because last couple minutes, he was just grabbing at it. He was just grabbing at it the entire time. Hopefully, it's nothing. Oh, my God. Would it be a big blow, not to just Heat, heat Nation, but all of NBA fans, if something happened that's going to prevent him from playing further. Like, come on, bro. This Miami Heat team has been one of the best and most fun teams to watch in this bubble, and Bam Adebayo contributes to that significantly. So the fact that maybe he is injured is kind of scary, and I'm wishing nothing but the best for him. Cool. Tyler Hero has the best game of his NBA career. Happens in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, 37? 37 for a rookie? One thing about Tyler Hero that I always wonder, and now y'all know Tyler Hero comes in, he plays with this swagger. He plays with a swagger that not many rookies came in and played with, like, his swagger's on a whole nother level. And and from everything I can I can figure out, that's kind of the way his mindset and personality has been throughout his entire career. And it's a, it's a good mindset to have as long as you can back it up. And so far, Tyler Hero can back it up. Can you imagine a guy having a Tyler Hero-type confidence with Jakar Sampson's skill? No disrespect to Jakar because he might be watching. But you get what I'm saying? Like, there's no reason to have that type of mindset if you're not out there actually hooping. But Tyler Hero's out there hooping. Now, my real question is, and this is something I think about very, very often when it comes to, like, drafting and rookies and forming careers, how much of Tyler Hero's success is because he plays for the Miami Heat? Saying that if he got drafted to Charlotte instead of the Miami Heat, Will he, would he still be out there hooping the way he is? Or the fact that he was with the Heat, Pat Riley gave him the keys and like, hey, play play yourself, do everything you got to do. Jimmy Butler became his best friend and is teaching him. You got Goran Dragic, you got all these. So I wonder how much like these outside factors matter in comparison to like what Tyler Hero does. Because you know, it's not just the Miami Heat. Tyler Hero puts in the work. It's, you know, it's his own work as well. So I wish I can like really get a gauge on that. We'll never really know because we can only see one path of an NBA player. We will never be able to tell what Tyler Hero will be able to do if he played for the Charlotte Hornets. But the fact that he does play for the Miami Heat, I can say that it's definitely helping him out more in comparison to if he was with the Charlotte Hornets. And Charlotte Hornets fans are probably real mad because that was a lot of me it's basically saying the Charlotte Hornets are not a very good uh, atmosphere, especially in comparison to the Miami Heat. So I want to talk about the Miami Heat because the Miami Heat, I remember – Years ago, when I used to read articles, <laughs> we've come a long way, ladies and gentlemen. We no longer read articles. We listen to podcasts around here. Um, Zach Lowe is one of my favorite columnists, and I love his podcast as well. And Zach Lowe is like one of the few people in the sports world that I would actually sit down and read his articles. They're very insightful. And though, I, again, I don't agree with everything he says, I can look at him and be like, oh, that's very interesting. And I remember after... It may have been the Tyler Johnson signing where they matched that was a $50 million contract from the Brooklyn Nets. Or maybe it was when 
Um, they signed Kelly Olenek. It was something that happened in free agency. I remember Zach Lowe writing, or maybe I got my timeline missed up. Basically, he was writing that the Miami Heat's future is one of the, like, bleakest in the NBA. Not saying that they were about to be a 20-win team or anything, but he just didn't know how they went, how they can go from just a team that's good enough to compete to a team that could get to a championship-level team. And when he said that, there was nothing wrong with saying that because for the most part, he was he was right. That was like four or five years ago, and now they're one game away from playing in the NBA Finals. So the Miami Heat success gives me just a little bit of hope, and it should give hope to all of the other teams out there that are bad right now that they turn this team that was okay to a team that's about to go on and potentially go to an NBA Finals. Again, but the Heat is a little bit different. This is me contradicting myself. This is a ramble. This is me contradicting myself in the sense that it's the Miami Heat. They have something that not many teams have that are bad. The Charlotte Hornets, the New York Knicks, the Chicago Bulls don't have a culture at all. And no matter when the Miami Heat was a terrible team, a good team, a great team, one thing that has stayed in the, stayed the same is they have a culture. You know what I'm saying? So though they may have had one of the bleakest futures, according to Zach Lowe, one thing that was going to stay the same is that they had a very good coach in Eric Spostra, and you could not come to their team if your body fat percentage was higher than this certain point. And you couldn't come to this team if you if you weren't all in on team basketball. And you couldn't come to this team if basketball wasn't your number one priority. Other teams, the teams that are bad right now, that is one of their biggest things. Chicago doesn't have that, and hopefully they're trying to build that with Billy Donovan and all these other staff signings that we have, we've had that have went under the radar. Um, New York is trying to get a culture as well by bringing in Tom Thibodeau, and you know all the rumors said that they want to try to trade for Chris Paul because he is a culture-changing type of guy. Charlotte? Okay, that's enough of me. <laughs> that's enough of me talking trash about Charlotte. I'm sorry, Charlotte fans. It's just kind of it's just kind of easy to do. You know what I'm saying? And you can probably you can throw it right back at me at my favorite team because we're just as bad. But you get what I'm saying? You know, like when I watch the Heat, and then every couple times, every time they they play, a couple times they show Pat Riley, and he's just the coolest dude in the league, bro. I when I was at the draft combine last year, a little flex. You know, I had a little media pass. Was at the draft combine and talked to Tyler. I didn't talk to Tyler Hero. My boy Pierre did. I don't watch college basketball. So I was at the draft combine like, who is that? No, I knew names, but I didn't. Anyway, we were talking to Tyler Hero. And um, my boy Pierre, he tweets that clip out like every time Tyler Hero does something good because he was all in on Tyler Hero um, before the draft. But anyway, we were at the draft combine. And I remember walking past Eric Spolster. I walked past Larry Bird. And I walked past Pat Riley. There were so many legends in the gym watching the draft combine. But it was one person that was like an array of just greatness behind him and around him. And that was Pat Riley. No matter who was in the room. And we're again, I'm talking about legendary GMs, uh, scouts, coaches, all around in the the only thing I can really see that, that I really cared about was seeing Pat Riley. He's the coolest man. He is super cool. The man be having meetings with players, put his rings on the table and be like, okay, now sign here. We can get you one of those. <laughs> Did that to Jimmy Butler? And look at that. They, they are four, five games away from making it a reality. Now, the next five games are going to be super tough. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be super tough. If they're going to do it, these next five games are going to be super tough. But he does that. He does have this, this swagger about him. And back to like the Tyler Hero thing, maybe maybe that's one of the great things about about Pat Riley, that he can see that swagger in Tyler Hero and be like, okay, I can turn this this swagger cockiness into just like a very very good basketball player. He saw something in Bam Adebayo. I I went back a couple weeks ago and read a bunch of um read a bunch of NBA comparisons for like players that were drafted like late lottery that turned out to be really good. And Bam Adebayo is one of those guys. I don't remember the exact number. It was at 13, 14, 15. He was in that realm of drafting. And Pat Riley saw something in him that he took him right there. You know, when I was going back to read it, some of his comparisons are like, bro, you could you see what they compared him to then and then you compare it to what he is now? Like, dog, how is that possible? But maybe it was something in his mentality that Pat Riley saw or just saw the immense amount of potential like, oh, um, that guy is a decent playmaker. He just didn't really get a chance to showcase that. Oh, or that guy plays amazing defense, and he actually cares about team basketball. You know, I feel like the scouting team at the Miami Heat are ridiculous. They put together some very great teams. This team 
it's, it's far from flawless, but everything works together. They made the trade at the deadline to get more defenders to guard Giannis. And guess what? They dominated Giannis. It's just small things like that that may get a little bit overlooked in the Miami Heat are doing that. From the Boston Celtics side, there's the series is never o- over for anybody until there's the last buzzer and somebody has won four out of seven games. So I am not writing out, writing off the Boston Celtics at all. Um, as you can see, that they've been ev- in every single one of these games. It said the only game that was that wasn't even close was the game that they won. So they got to be beating themselves up because again, they were in every single game. And before this game, if you tallied up all the points scored in this series. The Boston Celtics have had the more points. You know what I'm saying? So it's just they got to be kicking themselves when not being able to to close out games or when they have this small deficit with 30 seconds to go. They just can't get it done because as much as I just praise the Miami Heat, this series could legitimately be over for the other team. That's how close it has been throughout this series. You know, so I'm, I'm very curious to see how the rest of the series goes. What kind of we already saw adjustments coming out from these two teams. Eric Spostra played Solomon Hill, gave him some run for the first time. We are in the conference finals. Solomon Hill ain't even touched the floor. He's he's been a cheerleader the whole time, but he got PT today. From the Boston Celtics, Robert Williams got PT today. He didn't even bring Anais Cantor off the bench you know, as he first big off. They they went with Rob, uh, Rob Williams. The little stuff like that is is very important when you have teams that are so evenly matched up. It may just boil down to coaching, you know, just coaching, playing this chess match. And at this moment in time, I can say that Eric Spostra has won this chess match. It's not it's not over. It's the best of seven. But so far, Eric Spostra has got the better, better. I think that's it. I'm excited for whatever happens in this series, in the next series on both sides. I'm just super happy that. These are the four teams we have in the conference finals because they're all super special in their own way. And no matter what the series deficit is, I can still say with confidence that a team could come back. You know, this was probably the biggest ramble of all of the recent videos. I think I went everywhere. Shout out to Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, Jason Tatum from turn man from turning that game around from where he was because he was looking awful from scoring the ball. He tried to do his thing with his, his pass and his playmaking. And I can say that Jason Tatum's playmaking in the playoffs has been really, really good. I don't know if I've really recognized it before the playoffs started. Maybe he's been doing this all season. But his playmaking has been really, really good. They just have too many great ball handlers over there. JT, Jalen Brown. Okay, I'm gone. I don't I don't know how people how does how is this happening? I'm gone. I don't know how people are 